I have a fairly unique job. Uh, I'm the chair of cardiovascular surgery in Houston. It means I'm over cardiac surgery, thoracic transplant, and vascular surgery. I'm also the medical director for the Methodist Tobacco Heart and Vascular Center. And one of the nice things about this is that I get to see horizontally across the spectrum of what's going on in the cardiovascular disease. I'm a vascular surgeon, okay? Um, that's my DNA. But three out of five of our last finishing trainees have opted to go on to do cardiac surgery fellowships. Now, as a vascular surgeon, you either pull your hair out and say, that's terrible, or you, it makes you pause and think about why that is the case. Now, again, I emphasize we have a unique structure. Our residents work with our cardiac surgeons all the time, so they're exposed to this. But in the past, in Houston, when I went down there, the prevalent word was, I'm a cardiovascular surgeon. I used to say, there is no such thing as a cardiovascular surgeon. There's a cardiothoracic surgeon and a vascular surgeon. And that was the debakey Cooley model. And I didn't like it. But I'm kind of doing a 180 and thinking through this because our residents and fellows who are opting to do this are doing it for a reason. In the past, you used to do five years of general surgery two years of vascular surgery, and you'd have to do another two years of cardiac surgery to get board certified in all of these different topics. Now you can do five years of vascular surgery and two years of cardiac and be a preeminent cardiovascular interventionist. The reason I, I think this is important for vascular surgeons is we, we can't stop this. Okay? So I think we should embrace it. And I think we should make sure that the vascular trainees who choose to take this path still see themselves as vascular surgeons. Now, what are the threats? The threats are that they see themselves as heart surgeons. And we certainly have the ability to make them feel like they're heart surgeons if we divorce them from the vascular surgery group. And I think that would be a terrible mistake. If I was gonna train again, this is what I'd do. I'd do five years of vascular, two years of cardiac. I don't wanna do thoracic. I can go into general surgery, but I want to be able to do the structural heart interventions, the complex aortic interventions, and so I think that this is a changing training paradigm that nobody's really figured out yet what the importance of this is going to be going forward. Because as a cardiac program director, if I wanted to train a cardiac surgeon, if they're going to train a thoracic surgeon, absolutely they should recruit general surgery residents. General surgery residents don't know any vascular now. They don't get taught how to do anastomosis. Our vascular residents come out fully trained to, to do this. They are going to be the pick of the crop for cardiac surgery program directors. And so I think it is a change in paradigm, one we need to give some thought to. And I think that industry has already given thought to this. Uh, we already have a prototype of this, a guy called Marvin Atkins. He was a vascular surgeon for 14 years, went back and trained with Joe Bavaria, and now is a cardiovascular surgeon. And he can compete with anybody, including the non surgical specialties. There are certain obvious areas that people who are double boarded like this uh, can be preeminent in. Again, cardiac surgery has really struggled with developing endovascular skills. They are really smart and will learn that this is the way they're going to import vascular surgery or endovascular skills into their specialty. And so I, I think that the type of procedures that they're going to impact will be all the, all the structural heart interventions, what do I mean by that? TAVR, mitral valve, ascending aorta, arch. I mean, those are people who are exquisitely uh, trained to be able to handle those kind of interventions. But, you know, they're going to be trained to be able to handle, if they can handle the complex ones, they can probably handle the less complex ones. But I do see them as tracking specifically in that direction. And for people like me who recruit people like that, they are going to be incredibly enticing to bring them into your program.